Good morning. So, this morning I was thinking about just some of the things that, um, you know, I've experienced in my life, right? And in thinking about these things, I was um, thinking also about, like, new skills that I've had to learn, uh, yeah, different different things, as it were. Okay. And it caused me to, to go back and reflect on a time when uh, we were really struggling and I had some things going on that I needed to, needed to push past and get my family through. And I met this, um, I met this young man at a post office and while I was, um, while I was uh, getting my mail and doing a couple of different things there, I was about five feet from him, maybe, uh, and I couldn't help but overhear part of his conversation. And he had he had called um, a company that was handling his income tax, and he apparently was due a refund, and he was looking for a way to get his money uh, in an expedited fashion as soon as possible because he he had some things that were going on and I was listening to him um, because I couldn't help but hear his conversation he was he wasn't really trying to speak softly and he, he wasn't trying to to be loud or anything but he was just right next to me um, he and his family were and this was his girlfriend and his son and, and they were going to be evicted because the property owner had sold the building and the new owners wanted to renovate the building and they were getting they were pushing everybody out they were getting rid of all the getting rid of all of the leases um, they were giving people a period of time to move but everybody had to get out and he didn't have enough money for first month's rent last month's rent and a security deposit which is you know can be a pretty heavy jump. <clears throat> if I remember correctly, he was the only one working too. But um, it, you know that was I'd, I'd been through similar things, I, so my heart was in tune with his need. And I'm not saying this to brag. I'm saying this as instruction. I went and. I just kind of prayed for a moment and I said okay you know this guy needs help what can I do to help and I had a bit of money in my in my wallet um, almost a hundred bucks and I said you know what and the thought dropped in my heart just give him your money so I pulled pulled stuff out of my wallet I stuck it in my pocket put my wallet away and when he was done, I, I just asked him, I want to say, for some reason, I want to say his name was Thomas or Tom. I Don't quote me, but anyways, that name rings a bell. But anyhow, he, he was in a lot of need. And here I was just um, having a conversation with him. Um, and I said, you know, what's going on? How you doing? Etc. cetera. Um, you know, sorry, I couldn't help but over here it was literally sorting my mail right here and getting stuff done and he said don't worry about it you know and I said well listen I was I just praying and asking God if there was something I could do to help you and this is all for you and he just looked at me like what now I say that to say this this isn't a pat your back moment um, from morning meditation this morning I was thinking about different things in life and the scripture came to mind out of Micah chapter 6 verse 8 and it says the, the New Living Translation says no O people the Lord has told you what is good and this is what he requires of you to do what is right to love mercy and to walk humbly with your God. <clears throat> and I was thinking about that, that one situation. There have been people that have helped me 
when I needed help, whether it was wisdom, whether it was knowledge, whether it was a connection, whether it was somebody who said, go do this kind of business with this person, but don't do the other kind of business because they, you know, it just guidance, right? You don't know what you don't know. And you don't, sometimes you, you don't know what you need to know. Or maybe that, I mean, he needed thousands of dollars, but maybe that little bit of money was what he needed for gas and for food for his son and to take care of a couple of a couple of things that he had to have until he could get his check and then be able to take care of everything else. I don't know. I, I, I have no idea. But to walk humbly with your God to me also means just asking God for help. Keep asking until you no longer need that kind of help. And being grateful for what you get along the way. Um, to do what's right, to me, that's also doing what is just, what is honorable, what is correct, even when it's hard. Um, you know, a lesson I, I was trying to teach my my youngest and so in our neighborhood the you know the handful of kids that are in the neighborhood they when they arrive they kind of line up and uh, for school bus sorry incomplete thought <laughs> not enough coffee let me correct that i think i'm clinically decaffeinated Anyhow, you know, so they they you know handful of kids, but they, they line up according to when they arrive. And there have been times when she's pushing me out the door. You know, Dad, I want to be first today. Okay. Anyhow, she's competitive. It's fun. Um, but she arrived and she cut the line. And I said, no. Go back to the back. It's okay. And I just stood there with her. We talked, but it's it's doing what's right. It's teaching that, um, and then to love mercy. Mercy can be a hard one because you know someone deserves something. You know they deserve a punishment, and mercy says you don't give it to them. Mercy says. It's not that they get away with it. Everybody knows they did it. They didn't get away with anything. And they may still have other penalties. You know, civil and criminal. You might not be able to prove a case beyond a shadow of a doubt, but there is reasonable understanding. It's a different standard for what would the common man think about something versus beyond a reasonable doubt for a criminal case. And so when you're looking at a civil suit, well, you may not still get away with it. You might end up owing somebody a substantial amount of money or some kind of penalty. <sighs> the Lord wants you to do what is good. So, love your neighbor as yourself, right? Talk about the golden rule. There are two golden rules. The God made one and the man made one and the man made one says he who has the gold makes the rules right um, do what is good huh. that is good for you first because if you're not taking care of yourself you're not around for everybody else you need to be around for everybody else. You know, there are people who have committed suicide that are no longer around to do good for others. Jordan Peterson, I'll, I'll paraphrase, but he says something to the effect of never underestimate the hole you leave in other people's lives with your absence.
your absence. Have you considered your absence? Because none of us get out of this alive. Have you considered your absence? Well, in the meantime, you have an opportunity to do a whole lot of good. So my, I guess my admonition for you this morning is walk humbly before your God and do what is good. Because it feels a heck of a lot better than doing what's not. I don't know about you, but I feel a heck of a lot better when I've done good. Anyhow, thanks for the time with me this morning meditation. I appreciate your time. Uh, if you need something, give us a shout. Let me pray. Father, I ask that you would bless the people that watch this video. Bless them, protect them, keep them, strengthen them, bless their families, bless them with good health, bless their finances, bless their property, bless them to be constructive and productive, bless them to contribute back into life, bless them to understand that what they have gone through in life is a small part of what they could have gone through, and there are others who have gone through far more for the good and for the bad. Help them, protect them again. Let them and help them to be stronger. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you, man. Dads, proud of you. You got a hard job. Keep it up. <laughs>